Example 86.5. Starting salaries for business majors in the U.S. are normally distributed with a mean of $44,000 and a standard deviation of 5300 Find the probability that a randomly selected business school graduate earns less than 30000 or more than 60000 Okay, so the problem here mentions the fact that the starting salaries are normally distributed. So that makes me think of drawing a bell curve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to draw a bell curve. And I'm going to label, as always, a z-axis and an x-axis. The z-axis will be centered at zero, and the x-axis will be centered at the mean for the problem. The mean is $44,000. Okay, then we have a standard deviation given to us. So we're going to put that in the upper corner. That's 5,300. Okay, so we have everything we need right now to start the problem. What you want to do is to put the number or the numbers that they asked us about in this problem on the number line, of course, right? So it says find the probability a randomly selected business school graduate earns less than 30000 or more than 60000 All I've done here is I've put the values on the x-axis. Remember, these are dollar amounts, so they go with the dollar amounts here in the bottom axis. The z-axis should be reserved for only z-scores. But I've put them where they belong relative to 44,000, right? 60,000 is greater, so it's on the right. 30,000 is less, so it's on the left. And I go ahead then and draw lines above those values. Now let's think about what we should shade here, what area we're looking for, in other words. We're looking for the probability that they earn less than 30,000 or more than 60,000. So less than 30,000 is this part, right? And more than 60,000 is this part, right? Because these values are greater than 60,000, these values are less than 30,000. To write it out in a probability statement, it's actually this, right? It's a probability that, what, the dollar amounts that they earn are less than 30,000 or the dollar amounts are greater than 60,000. What does this word or mean? Doesn't it mean to add in probability? So shouldn't I say this is the probability that x is less than 30,000 plus the probability that x is greater than 60,000? Right? The word or, remember, in probability means to add. So I need to work out these two things separately and then add them together. That's easy enough. Let's go ahead and figure out what z-scores correspond to these parts. Because once we have the drawing shaded, we're usually going to get the area from the z-table, right? So to do that, we need to convert these to z-scores first. All right, so let's start with the uh, 30,000. Let's do that one first. So the 30,000, if we plug it into our z-score formula, will end up being the number we want to convert, 30,000, minus the number in the middle, the mean, the 44,000, divided by the standard deviation of 5,300. Let's see what that ends up giving us. So I'm going to use parentheses so I can do it all at once. 30,000 minus 44,000, close the parentheses, and divide by 5,300. When I'm done, I get minus 2.64, minus 2.64. And again, we want to make sure that, uh, sorry, it's a little off the screen there. Let's do minus 2.64. We want to make sure that we round off to two decimal places, right? You want to make sure that you're rounding off to two decimal places because that's how our table works. It only has two decimal places after the decimal point. So this means this guy is minus 2.64. All right, and it should be negative because it's to the left, correct? Now we do the next z-score in the same fashion. So the z-score for that one will be the number we want to convert, which is 60,000 minus 44,000 divided by 5,300. Okay, so let's plug that into our calculator. Now I actually have most of these numbers already in there, so I'm just going to pull it all back up. I'm going to come up here and convert this to 60,000. So then it's 60,000 minus 44,000 divided by 5,300. And when I'm done, I get 3.02 if I round, right? So 3.02 becomes that z-score. So 3.02. Okay, so now that we have our, our values for the two z-scores, we can go to the table and begin to look these things up.
Now, if I look up 3.02, I'll get the area from here to here. Let's go do that now and figure out what that area is. Okay, so we're looking to find 3.02 on our Z table. Let's move it all the way down to the last row because 3.0 is the very last row in our table. When we look at that up, we have 3.012. The value is 0 0.4987. Okay, so we found the, the value 0.4987 for this little part of the curve. Now, let's look up negative 2.64, which will give us the area from here to the center, right? Let's see what that answer is when we look it up on the Z chart. Okay, so we're looking to find negative 2.64 on our table. Let's scroll the table down so we can see the 2.6 position. So here's the 2.6 row, and we need to go over to 2.64, so it's 2.601234. We get the answer 0 0.4959, 0 0.4959. Okay, so we found the answer 0.4959. And that's the area from here to here after looking up negative 2.64 on our Z chart. Now, one thing you might have thought to do, because you're used to finding these tail areas by subtracting from 0.5, so you could say, well, 0.5 minus 4987 gives us 0 0.0013, and you could say that's the area in this tail. And then you could do the same thing here, you know, 0.5 minus this area, and get the area in this tail, and then you could add that together. Let me just quickly do that for you in the calculator, and then I want to talk about another way to do the problem to finish it up. But so again, if I if I did this one, you know, we'd get the same answer I already mentioned. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4987 is going to give you 0 0.0013, and then we can do the same on the other side, and that's also easy. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4959, this will give you 0 0.0041, and so with those two values, we end up saying, okay, we have the shaded areas separately. And those are the areas we're looking for. This one, point zero zero four one, corresponds to the probability of the x value being less than 30,000. And you could add that to the probability that x is greater than 60,000, which is our point zero zero one three, And then we end up with our answer. And our answer, of course, will be point zero zero five four. So this becomes our solution, right? So we're just summing these two together, we get 0 0.0054. That is one way to do the problem. There is, of course, another way. The other way is, and you might have thought of this idea, is to simply say, hey, look, this area in the middle, this white space, is the only area of the curve we don't want, right? Because we want the shaded area, and this white space is what we don't want. Well, the whole curve has an area of 1, so you could have simply done this as well. You could have done 1 minus the two areas we have. So 0 0.4959 minus 0 0.4987. And when you do that, you see you get the same result, 0 0.0054. So it's an equivalent way to do the problem. But either way, the final answer to the problem is basically point, uh, or 0 0.54%, right? 0.54%. So there's a very small probability, about half of 1% chance that people working um, in the business world with a business degree, their starting salaries would be higher than 60000 or lower than 30000 So this gives graduates with business degrees um, a certain idea of where their starting salary should be. Very few of them will be above 60000 Only 0.13% will earn more than 60000 first graduating with their business degree with a bachelor's. And then for the lower end, you know, only 0.41% of them will start at a salary lower than 30,000, assuming this mean and standard deviation are in fact 